you know, I keep talking about Nigel Wash, so we should start with him. And I know I that you've been share, very active. I have no, to share ahead. workout and I'm going to post a copy. I'm going to send it to you. It's this okay. crazy workout that he did on Wednesday and it, it consisted of 200 burpees. Uh, what Benny Kiva does is we are a insurance platform for life, annuities and health side of the, the insurance spectrum. And we are on a mission to transform claims. We're moving into servicing and we are experimenting with another initiative. So we offer our platform to the carrier and what the carrier is doing is offering a portion of our platform like the portal side to their customers. Some of their customers are business owners, some of their like agents or funeral home users. So it's that B and some of their users are beneficiaries, policy holders. So it's both angles that are interacting with our platform. So when we heard this idea about the insurance, <laughs> we had experience and we had just bought life insurance. And when Brent told us about the a stat, I will never forget the stat, like that's what made me come to the industry was 68% of claims go unclaimed because they're, the people that have the policies are not telling their beneficiaries that they have policies. So all this money is going into unclaimed property. And if you do yeah. the unclaimed property research, there that's a billions of dollars. It grows at an annual rate of one billion. So how do you become smart about leveraging that dinosaur, but being the customer first, beneficiary first in our world, staff first, right? So just talking about you for a second, you picked my curiosity so you're the startup, this is the second startup, you were a developer, you worked for Pepsi. What else did you do? Honestly, I think, so my thoughts are they're there, like the female entrepreneurs are there, they're just hidden. And sometimes they don't get the platform to really talk um, uh, about what they're building. So. That's one scenario I've seen. I've seen, um, so a second scenario, this is like, folks, I may just get some like very interesting comments after I say this. Sometimes the women are hidden. They're the engine behind the startup. I know two companies locally that have this issue. Women are driving it, but they're not a founder title on the website. That's a future yeah. pipeline. So That's Anna what I'm talking about. Up. Yeah. Yeah, she's I was referring to She's going to be a business owner. <laughs> That's what she wanted to be for her career day. I'm talking about things that we can do immediate, right? There's, mm -hmm. there are so many talented women. And I mean, there's a pool of talent. And I sometimes feel like you just need to just give inspiration, give them they can do this and allow them the opportunity to fail, succeed slash fail. How I would look at building a pipeline is I now have a, a platform, right? So there's three founders, Brent, myself, and Sovin, and the platform is anybody that we hire in Benikiva. So we keep it very diverse, we keep a very open mind, because once you work in a startup, that's your, then you get skills, right? Like you will, Gilad, you know, as a startup founder, you're not just a salesperson or whatever your hat that you have the CXO, whatever that CXO is, you're wearing multiple hats. So if you start to bring others in and get them exposed to entrepreneurship, I think that pipeline will come in. Uh, yeah, this has been a fun conversation. Like you said, like we can talk, like there's so many different avenues and uh, mm -hmm. what you're doing is awesome. Like having this forum and I would just say, keep inviting more people and diverse voices 
like I told ITC, the more diverse voices that you're exposing, A, you're, you're getting exposed to it, and B, your viewership is going to, you know, mm -hmm. you can amplify your message in, in a totally different way.